Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church this morning. Welcome to the smiling, I suspect, faces underneath the mask. Welcome to the people that are joining online, and welcome to those who will watch later in the week whenever they watch it. We, I mean, we do know that people watch later in the week whenever it's better for their schedules, and so welcome to you all also. I'm glad to have your participation and your joining in worship, whether you're here in the room or at home. Um, just a couple of announcements, though. Uh, it is Reformation Sunday next Sunday, um, which means you wear what color? Red. Look at that. No, not purple. Pastor Jocelyn. Unless you're colorblind, then you can wear purple. <laughs> it is red, and so if you come to church next week, wear red. That's always a fun tradition of the church. And even if you're home, wear red. Wear your red pajamas for church that day, for real. Um, and then the Sunday after that is All Saints Sunday, which is another big day for the church as we remember those who have, especially those who have died in the last year, and really those who have died any year. I just think it's a good chance to remember those whom we miss and those whom we love. Um, but those are the next two weeks. Just wanted to throw that out there as a little reminder for you all. Um, coming up here, uh, I guess just a little recap for the last few weeks. Um, yesterday was Van Kirk's Crafts Bazaar, um, which was really a great time for them. They've traditionally done it on, um, on Sunday mornings or Sunday after church. Um, this time we were able to get the fire hall for a Saturday. And um, I just, as I stopped real briefly this morning, were they talking about it this morning? Better than they ever have. Huge success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like financially twice as much as they've ever made before. Right. And just a huge turnout and mm -hmm. lots of church people there too. It was great. Yeah, it was a great day. Yeah, so I don't know if any House of Prayer folks came, but I know people from across the parish all went to it. It was really good. Um, just uh, thanks. It was awesome. Um, so here's a coming up. I heard the pulled pork was pretty good. It was whoever <laughs> did the work on the whoever, pulled pork yeah. nailed it. I mean that. Yeah, they must have put some effort into that. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Mortimer and I um, smoked pork. Right. Like, yes. <laughs> Pastor Johnson's a vegetarian, so that's yeah. saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I heard it was pretty good. <laughs> you didn't try it at all? I might have taken one little bite. Just for the sake of yeah. like making sure. Yeah. 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 It was. Um, Pat, uh, Gary Mortimer and myself, uh, did. we smoked pork butts. We, it was like competing pork butt uh, making. <laughs> Mine was better. No, it was just a little. His took longer, I think. Did it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It was awesome. Coming up, though, here in November, this is like an a introduction to a really big, huge thing that you'll hear a lot more about in the next year. But um, National Youth Gathering. Uh, have any of you had gone to the National Youth Gathering or sent kids to National Youth Gathering? I know some of you. Yeah. There, so we, I know at House of Prayer here, there's a lot of familiarity with that. There's some familiarity across the whole parish. Maybe people beyond have heard of this. So every, like, three years, the ELCA, our larger church denomination, does this big, huge youth gathering. And what that means is like 30 to 40,000 primarily high school kids, along with their chaperones and adults, converge on a city somewhere in the country, a city that has to have an indoor arena for 30 or 40,000 people, and then hotel infrastructure for that. Um, so that's not a whole lot of places we can go. But every three years we go and do this, and it's just an amazing like four days of gathering together. It's really life-changing, like shockingly life-changing. Um, I know here at House of Prayer, we've gone a few times since I've been here, and we're going to go again next summer uh, in July. So anyone that is in high school will be eligible and is going. And so um, to go to a big trip like this, it's in Minneapolis, you've got to travel there, you've got to pay for the event gatherings, uh, fees, all that stuff, hotels, and I, I always like to add a few extra days of like sightseeing somewhere on the way to really educate the young people on the world. And Chicago is on the way, so I think we might stop at Chicago for a few days on the way there or back. But we need money, so we need all of you who are here in the room or watching online to be super generous over the next uh, 10 months or so. And we'll give you lots of opportunities to be generous. That is, if you don't just want to write a big check, right? I mean, you can do that right now. Just write a huge check just to cover all of our young people and their experience next summer. Um, or there'll be fundraisers along the way, too. Um, on November 14th will be our first official fundraiser, and we are going to do a spaghetti dinner, um, but we are not inviting you to come and sit down and eat it. We're inviting you to give us money, and then we'll serve you outside. We'll bring the food out to you on that Sunday afternoon, and you can just put it in your car and take it with you. Um, we haven't worked out all the details, but it is my hope that we'll have like a gluten-free option too, because I know there are gluten-free folks out there. Um, we'll have like a meat-free option too for those who don't eat meat. 
Um, uh, but it'll be, a, it'll be a good event. It'll be our first opportunity to start raising money for our kids to do their youth thing, and so they'll participate in it. They'll be part of the day also. We haven't really planned many details. Just want to get it on your calendar right now. Um, November 14th, don't plan for dinner for that day. Plan to give your money to us, and we will give you dinner. Good. Excellent. I love the, the feedback is overwhelming always here. Um, let's see who's joining us online. Uh, the Todd family, right off the bat, was the, they're the first ones on here. I don't know if anyone else can see this. Emily, can you see this also? Emily responds to all the messages on here for the church. Um, now it says, like, anniversary follower on top of people's names. And then there's another one that says Seguidor over top of, like, Diane Cannon. Um, then there's another one. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. It's like a, a Spanish name. Now, Eques Nenhuma Data. And then there's just follower. Diane's just a follower as opposed to an anniversary follower. That is really strange. Someone, like, if you're watching the live stream and you know what all these names mean, like, help me out. But Jamie and Brian and the family over there, they're the first ones on. Good morning to you guys. So great that you're joining. Um, Barbara, Omi, glad, glad to have you on this morning. Quayshawn, good morning to you. Brian Cole, it is always good to have you on and be hearing from you. Diane Cannon, who's a seguidor, um, good morning to you, whatever that means. Um, the Spang family, they are smiling online, too. That is awesome. Um, Joyce and Bob Weaver, good morning to you guys. Diane Imp said she went to the Van Kirk sale. The pulled pork was wonderful. Pat on my back there. Mom and Dad are on their anniversary followers, whatever that means. Um, Janice Fletcher, good morning from Pittsburgh. Um, I always makes, when I see people checking in from different places, it makes me wonder how far away people are that join on to our live stream. Like, not just our church people, but... It's out there, so people anywhere could be watching it. And I, I just wonder how far our reach is. Um, Liza, Joe, good morning to you in the Hummels. That's awesome. You're joining live. That is fantastic. Because I, I think you guys have been like a follow later in the week sort of people. Uh, well, glad to have you live this morning. Um, Amy McBride, good morning to you. And Nancy Minard, good morning to you, Nancy. It's good to have people from across our whole parish joining, as well as people probably from wherever joining. Okay, I think that's all my announcements, which you're all pleased about. Um, you can text me your prayers throughout worship, and I'll read them during the prayers of intercession. You are free to comment on how worship is going in the live stream if you want, especially if you're home. But if you're here in the room, pull out your phone and comment. Um, just mute it, because we don't need to hear the liturgy like 30 seconds later. Um, glad to see all of you this morning. Ben? Did you get, I got you in mid-drink up there. He was just taking a drink, and then like, Ben, play some music. <laughs> Could you gather us with some prelude type music?
Joe has educated us on uh, what the anniversary follower means on Facebook. It means you've been following the church's first Facebook page for at least a year. So there's, then there's like a little, uh, for those who are on Facebook, a little circle that says how many, like a number there. And so some people have been following for two years or one year or three years. Um, Jamie, Todd, and I are winning the four. So pick it up. I invite you to please rise for confession, repentance, and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. We'll pause just for a moment to reflect on the ways we've broken relationships. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life Free us for life in the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. And for our kids' moment, if you are following along in our Spark Story Bible, we are on page 240 today. 
See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Psalm for today is Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs. the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream, then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongues with shouts of joy, then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed for story. of Najim. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he who holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that he should have such a high priest holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priest those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later by the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. 
As you're able, please rise for our gospel. Our gospel today is from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, a blind beggar was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Stories like the one from today's gospel hit a little closer to home for me um, because bef uh, my dad was actually blind for about the last 15 years of his life. Not everyone with vision impairment, I'm sure, would feel this way, but I feel pretty confident that like Bartimaeus, my dad would have wanted more than anything for his sight to be restored. Because he was at a more advanced age when he lost his sight, my dad didn't put a lot of effort into learning how to depend more on his other senses and abilities to continue functioning in his daily life. But instead, he realized that he would no longer be able to do many of the activities that he enjoyed and relied primarily on my mom to help him from day to day. This was his choice. But others who are blind or differently abled in other ways have learned to thrive in their daily lives and share their gifts and at times even extraordinary talents. I'm sure that we can all think of people in our everyday lives and famous people who have become that way for their talents and abilities, who the world might otherwise categorize as less than just because they're different. And when we welcome them as part of our communities and share our gifts with one another, God's creation is restored. And this theme of restoration goes throughout our scripture readings today. The reading from the prophet Jeremiah is a promise to those who were in exile, the refugees, the women, the differently abled, that God would gather them back together and restore them to their community. It's a message of hope to the marginalized. And of course, in the gospel story, Bartimaeus has his sight restored. Today we don't have the same understandings of clean and unclean as they did in the time of the Old Testament laws, but those who are sick still need restoration. There are people who are hospitalized for extended periods of time who need to be restored to their community. People who are in nursing homes who long for the connections that they once had to their worshiping community. People in prison who are cut off from society. And even people who have been hurt or disappointed by the church who need healing and restoration. For people in any of these situations, and especially the last group, God calls us to be a means for restoration and healing. As members of the body of Christ and his representatives, we are called to welcome all people, regardless of age, race, gender, or sexual identity, illness, ability, or economic status. Just as Jesus did, we must look for the people 
who are pushed aside and relegated to the margins. Those who others ignore or overlook, those who others have told to stay in their place. This is the situation of Bartimaeus. He has been relegated to the margins. He is overlooked and shoved aside by many. And when he tries to get Jesus' attention, he's told to be quiet. But Jesus notices him. He calls him over and listens to him and asks how he can help. And he heals him and restores him to his community. And Bartimaeus is moved to continue following Jesus. Faith can make us well, but not through some sort of magic or wishing hard enough. Bartimaeus takes a risk in approaching Jesus and asking for healing. He makes himself vulnerable and gives all he has. And Jesus has compassion and brings him healing and restores his sight. But the healing Bartimaeus receives is not because of persistence. When Jesus says, your faith has made you well, he's not saying that Bartimaeus and others somehow believed their way into wellness. But he is pronouncing them well. It is Jesus who heals, and it is faith that receives that healing. Faith can open our eyes, fill our hearts, move us to make bold statements of God's love, and even raise us from death. Today's reading from the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that this same Jesus who restored sight to the blind is our great high priest who continually restores us to a right relationship with God. And this restoration isn't through our own merit, but through the love of Christ and the faith that we have been given as a gift by God. Christ declares to each of us, your faith has made you well. And God promises to be with us through all of the situations that leave us crying out for restoration. And God promises to be with us when we take risks to bring restoration to our neighbors, our community, and our world. And God promises to renew and restore our faith. This promise of restoration is acted out through our worship which is an important way that we can practice the work of God in order to then act it out in the world. In sharing the peace of Christ, we act out the restoration that we all need. In the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In hearing and speaking and singing God's word, in the holy meal of the Eucharist, and in confession and forgiveness, we are restored to wholeness with God and with one another. And more broadly speaking, by welcoming and inviting a diverse group of people with a variety of backgrounds and experiences and abilities to be a part of our worshiping community, we participate in God's promise and Christ's work of restoration. This gospel story and so many others teach us that it's not necessarily the disciples who appear to be the ones doing a good job of following Jesus that actually understand who Jesus is and what he's able to do. Instead, it's often the blind, deaf, or otherwise differently abled who are really able to recognize Jesus, and to see, hear, know, or do something that the rest of us cannot. When we fully welcome and integrate these folks, they are able to share their perspective and teach us how to recognize Jesus in new ways. God's gift of faith gathers us together and makes us well. Amen.
I invite you to stand and join in saying the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In a position most comfortable to you, please be seated or kneeling. Our response today is hear our prayer. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, we give you thanks for generous land that produces abundant harvests. Strengthen and protect all soils from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands to patio planters to fer fertile valleys and bless all who lovingly tend them. Lord, in your mercy. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders of nations who work to build up the common good. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations that peace extends in every direction. Lord, in your mercy. Healing one, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially those which we name aloud or in silence. Lord, in your mercy. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations, Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord God, we, we raise up these, the prayers that have been shared throughout our community, both those in the room, those who are beyond the room, and for the prayers we offer up pray for Brian and uh, for his recent diagnosis and strength uh, in the journey ahead that he would he would receive the treatments as well as possible and his body would grow strong and fend off that which is ailing him. We give thanks for the joy of wedding anniversaries and wedding anniversaries. We pray for Marla Lane. We pray for Ginny and recovery from her a recent surgery. We offer up her prayers of healing for Anna, prayers of thanks for, uh, for prayers for Austin and Nate, prayers of thankfulness and prayers for them. Joyce offers prayers for Ken, Pat, Donna, Annette, and Dino. Diane offers prayers for Amy and her son-in-law Jim, who's having his hand surgery tomorrow. Rabbi Sean asks for prayers for Rhonda and himself for peace and joy. Mary Ann lifts up prayers for family and friends who are still fighting COVID, family and friends fighting cancer. Jamie also offers up prayers for Brian, his friends are healing from him. Prayers for Carter to stay strong. Janet 
as offers up prayers for family and friends and everybody in the family. These are the prayers that you lift up aloud. But of course, our hearts are full of many other prayers that maybe we don't have the, the voice to lift up aloud, but we know them. And Lord God, we trust that you know them. You're caring for all the hurts that we share, Lord. You hurt where we hurt. You share joy where we share joy. Your heart breaks where our heart breaks. We give these prayers to you. For as much as we offer our prayers to you, as much as we share our hearts with you, we give our vision and hope for the world to you. We listen for your hope and your vision for the world. And we listen for your vision for us individually. So now in our prayer, in our praying, pause just for a minute to listen for your voice. That our praying would not become one-sided with all of our things our ears and our hearts to listen for the ways in which you speak to us. So as we watch the time for just a moment, let's listen. give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow and hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers in your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. I invite you to please stand as you're able for the communion part of worship. The Lord be with you. We are beggars. It is true. Those words familiar to you? If you're a Luther historian, you'd know that those were his last words, he said. Martin Luther, as he was at least uh, claimed to have said before he died, we are beggars. It is true. Um, a statement that he felt was true about our whole relationship with God. We are beggars, and it is true. It's the way Luther in particular thought we ought to, as good faithful people, come to the Eucharist, our hands out like beggars, while having nothing to offer at this meal, having nothing to give God, but God comes and gives it all to us. The word restoration was used in the sermon. That is what happens here in the Eucharist. We come as beggars. We come without being able to articulate the right theology or have lived the right life over the last week or have done the right things, and yet God restores us. At this meal, God gives us the bread and wine. God gives us the promises. God gives us the salvation and the love, the compassion that he's offered us. We are beggars. It is true that God is loving, compassionate, and that is a good thing. Around this meal, 2,000 years ago, we imagine the disciples and those others there who maybe were not as much beggars as others, but what about Bartimaeus sitting at that meal? In the gospel, he picks up, or he lets go of his cloak and follows Jesus, likely to this meal that he celebrated with Jesus, where he found himself again begging, but being filled with God's love. So we do today. We remember on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. When you gather, do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. When you gather, do this and remember me. For as often as we've heard these words, we've prayed together the Lord's Prayer, yet another sign of that restoration that God intends to extend to us. So together we pray, and pray slowly, listening for the youngest among us, the voice, those voices of the Lord's Prayer. Pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day. You may be seated. We now distribute communion. Of course, all are welcome at this table. Um, all are welcome. Um, I just want to make a quick reminder that we've got individual cups of communion there that are on the table. will be right beside where you pick up your glass for wine. Um, and those are really just a representation of that grace that's extended beyond these walls. If you know people in your life that um, would value receiving God's love and compassion in the Eucharist, you are most welcome to take one of those with you and give it to them. Um, it, is, it is the most important thing that you can see here in this church this morning. All right, we will start with the left side, or your right side, my left side, first in giving out communion. find yourself in some far off place and it causes you to rethink some things you start to sense that slowly you're becoming someone else and then you find yourself you find yourself 
Yeah, that's when you find yourself When you meet the one That you've been waiting for And they're everything That you wanted and more You look at them And then you finally live for someone Then you find yourself Yeah, that's when you find yourself When you go through life So sure of where you're heading And we wind up lost And it's the best thing that could ever happen But sometimes when you lose your way just as well because you find yourself yeah that's when you find yourself As we find ourselves, yeah, that's when we find ourselves. Because we find ourselves, yeah, that's when we find ourselves.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Friends, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Again, I just want to say thanks for all of you being here this morning in the room and for the many people that joined online and for all your comments and prayers online. Um, the community has evolved a bit here, but it's a beautiful way I think we live out God's love for us and our vibrant different way of doing things. So friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with each other in the world.